All right. Welcome, welcome, everyone. It is week three of the boot camp. Um, last week, we went over the calendar. And I had, we had everyone um, bring their weekly planners and we listed several items that you needed to put in your weekly planner so that you can help create your DMO. Ethel, I need you on camera. If you are not on camera in 30 seconds, you are getting kicked off of this Zoom and you can catch it in the boot camp group. But for this Zoom, you must be on camera. Divorce, you got 15 seconds. Thank you. Okay. And let your people know too as well when you have them come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, I'm on camera. I put on these eyebrows for y'all. So y'all got to be on camera too. And I just got off a flight. But last week... um. We went over the calendar planning so that you can create your DMO so that you know what you should be doing. And so we listed out several things that you needed to put on your calendar and allow your calendar to dictate your activity, starting with your non-negotiables, right? What are your non-negotiables? Your work schedule at your job, uh, the IMV, basic training, right? There's some non-negotiables. So I wanna hear from some of you how has working, how many, how many of you, let's do this. How many of you, and I want you to put it in the chat. How many of you actually stuck to your calendar and allowed your calendar to dictate your activity yesterday after we did the exercise? Just put in the chat. I used my calendar. Okay, good. Leroy, can you talk about it? Tell me how how did your week go using your calendar? Was that your first time really being disciplined to use it? Tell, tell us about it. Yes, ma'am. That was my first time. Like I said, because I work with the VA and mm -hmm. I'm, I leave for work like four something in the morning and I get off like six or seven o'clock in the evening. So during the day, I, um, I wrote down all the stuff we had to have on my calendar. And it helps me to, as I go along to do my work during the day, okay, now I need to take time out to do this, take time out to do this. When I get off, I got to put this in the schedule to do this. And then when I get home like seven, eight o'clock at night, then I know what things I normally do. But now I look at my calendar and say, oh, I need to be, I need to be stuck doing this right here. And so it, it has been helping. I believe it helped me out in the, in the future also. So, so thank you for that. Awesome. Awesome, Leroy. Thank you. Luce, let's talk about it. So I can say that um, I was more mindful of my time and looking back at my uh, calendar and set up my alarm for certain activities and things to do. Um, when I was thrown a little fireball today, or, well, last night and today, I had to go to the emergency twice last night and this afternoon. Um, for both my daughters, I was like, where am I? Where am I? But I was able to get like right back on track after my brain was like... <laughs> Um, so that it really helped a lot during the weekend. I'm looking forward to making it a habit, more of a habit, um, so that I could get used to because it, it reduced a lot of the stress and anxiety as to what should I do now? Where should I go? What, what am I thinking? So mm -hmm. definitely helped a lot. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I hope your girls are okay, but I'm glad you shared that because there are going to be things that are thrown your way that kind of knock you off your schedule. And so you have to be able to bounce back. It's called light, <laughs> right? Remember, you're either, you're either going into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. And so the schedule is going to be what helps you to stay focused on your goals because the storms are going to come. I don't care. You hit five, six, seven, eight, nine star director. You're still going to have the storms and you got to be able to bend, but don't break. Write that down if you're taking notes. Bend, but don't break when it comes to your business. Be flexible, but then be able to jump back on. And I like what Lou says. She's like, after I kind of, you know, got a little off track with having to go to the ER twice with my kids, she was able to go right back to her schedule and say, okay, well, it's seven o'clock. What should I be doing at seven o'clock, right? Or maybe she went back and looked and said, what did I miss while I was at the ER? Let me get those things done. Let me make some adjustments. 
You got to be able to make adjustments. It's never going to be perfect. But if you just stick to your schedule, let's say 95% of the time, guess what? When a storm comes and knocks you off that 5%, you are still closer to your goal, right? Kimberly. Hello, everyone. Um, this exercise really helped me because um, it helped me get organized and let me see the different corporate meetings and everything and to actually put them down each day um, really helped me. So, and it also helped me understand the difference between balance and priorities. You know, a lot of times we talk about, um, I want a balanced life. But when you look at everything that you put down, everything is not equal weight. So you're really not trying to balance everything. You're just trying to figure out your priorities. So it really helped me. I appreciate it. I love that you said that because we all only have 24 hours in the day. You can't find another two hours. You can't make another five hours. You can only prioritize the time that you have. And when you are the CEO of your business, you have got to execute and get things done. And you can't just, you can't have it up here. It has to be on paper. Destiny? Um, yeah, just to piggyback on what everyone has said, it definitely made me like, I was like, where was this five years ago? Like, why did I not put my life on calendar before? Because like you just said, I used to be like, I can keep it in my head. And then I would feel overwhelmed and I would feel stressed. Like, I have so much to do, but now it's just like, even this week, my daughter told me she has something to do. I was like, put it in my calendar. And she looked at me like, what? Put it in my, <laughs> but it, it does. It takes a whole load off. Even if you still have a busy week, you feel like you have a little bit more control. So I did like it. Yes. Yes. Control. And you feel a sense of accomplishment, right? And, and here's the thing, because it's not always about the sign up. Yeah. We want to sign somebody up. But if you can look on your calendar and saw that you did the activity, even if you didn't get the sign up, you can say, I was productive today. You can't judge your productivity just by, did I sign somebody up? There's a lot. How many people did you pick? How many, how many videos did you say? Right. There's so many other things that lead to the sign up. And remember, the sign up is the one thing we can't control. But that calendar, we absolutely can control. Ruth, I want to hear from you because you said 90%. And you have a, a, a job that at a moment's notice, you, throws, right? Those storms come at you. Matt Peck, she deals with storms. First, talk about what you do for a living and how crazy that is for you when it comes to your schedule. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm actually a licensed general adjuster. Um, so I get claims in all 50 states, including the U.S. territories and Puerto Rico. Um, the past storms that we had here in Georgia, Alabama, the freeze losses across the United States, you know, pretty much I'm in a position where I dispatch the adjusters out to inspect, um, looking at reports. I'm dealing with public adjusters. I'm trying to get everyone's house in order and I'm also on call. So last week, I don't know if you noticed during that um, training, I had to jump off because I was on call. <laughs> And then, then we still have the regular day-to-day -day claims where you may have someone drive a car through a storefront, someone's house may catch on fire. So we are dealing with the regular claims per se. But right now we're in a season that they call cat duty or catastrophe duty, whereas you're always on call. So at a moment's notice, I may have to jump off and get on the emergency line to you know, just give somebody their coverage information, let them know we'll get an adjuster out as soon as possible. So this is what I do on a daily basis. Um, my normal hours, eight to five during cat season, it's 12, 12 on, 12 off. And that include weekends, but I'm still doing what I need to do. So, you know, I have a little ponytail going on right now, but I know this is my focus. This is my goal. So this is why I said, I know I'm at 90%. What I try to do during the day, I may not be able to do during the day, but I'll wake up four o'clock in the morning. I'm peeking somebody. I may go back to sleep at six leave out and do what I need to do during the day. Now it's just my hours. It's just what I normally try to plan for hours because I really don't have a normal work schedule. I'll fit in. I may take a little break here and there, but I'm going to send something out and I'll respond back to any messages from anyone that I may have that may have peaked earlier. 
So, and then I make it my business. I go to that Tuesday training because I can't get on the Wednesday. So you see me, I have somebody with me there. So. Right. Right. How has the calendar helped you um, be productive? Oh, it's been, it's been awesome um, because it keeps me accountable. Um, I know what I need to do. I'm not as dependent on Alexa, you know, because I hear that Alexa reminder, but it's like, I'm dependent on Alexa. Tell me what I need to do, but I'm more responsible for myself. So I can actually mm. go to the calendar and I'm checking off what I did. If I miss something, I know I need to go back and do that again. Um, I have something. So I have accountability, accountability, excuse me. And I can see exactly if I miss something where I need to pick off at. So. Okay, good. Uh, Corey Madison. Yes, ma'am. How has the calendar helped you this week? Um, I think it's helped me be a little bit more organized. I, I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I feel like I'm like the only one that's just like chaotic, live a life of chaotic. Um, Anybody but, else live a chaotic life? I, I know I'm not the only okay, one. Okay, there we go. But I just, I just <laughs> feel, I just feel like, oh gosh, you know, um, <clears throat> Uh, cause I, I also work, I work from home and I feel, and I'm new to this. Um, I started in September and, um, I, I just, I just signed two business partners. And so I have this rush, right? Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. now my biggest issue is being focused on my nine to five job and this so it's like now I literally have to put my phone on um, work mode Mm -hmm. so that I don't hear the the dings and the Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. so that I so that I can stay focused on work right and so the calendar is more so that I can stay focused on what I have jotted down for when I'm supposed to do what because um prior to me jotting that down Every time I heard a ding, I'm on it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also, even if it wasn't for me, I'm getting in there and I'm doing something else. Next thing you know, I'm getting lost and caught up and I'm not even thinking about my nine to five. Right. And then I have to reel myself back in and be like, boy, you're not in that place yet. Right. You know, you're not in that place yet. You you need this nine to five. So I I have to be um, self-disciplined to t- mm-hmm. turn my phone to like work mode so mm-hmm. that I don't get those those in- those interruptions and get sidetracked and then also just stick to what I have outlined on my my calendar. That's good. That's good, Corey. And yeah, when you are working your job, please work your job with integrity. <laughs> Some of you may have a job like with my job as a, when I was working as an administrative assistant, I was able to kind of work my business a good majority of the time, but then there were times when, okay, I had to put the phone away, just like Corey said, and and not be, but that is why, and make sure when you're coaching your new people, that is why the first thing they need to put on their calendar is their job, their work schedule, so that they can work their job with integrity, and then any other negotiables, right, oh, you got to you know, take the kids to basketball practice, or you have to go grocery shopping for your grandmother, whatever, those non-negotiable, all those things need to go on your calendar. You have to allow your calendar to dictate um, your activity. And then you're going to see you need to schedule your family. Yep. Your boo time, your date night. Yep. Time with your kids. You got to schedule it. You cannot fight for your financial freedom without scheduling everything. Schedule your self-care time. So it has to be everything. Anybody else want to share how uh, using the calendar has kind of changed, um, you know, the way they do business? Yeah, I'll share. Um, So for me, um, with the calendar, I made sure that I put down the time of the day to post. Um, It's helped me be more consistent and get back into the groove of the morning vitamin. I wasn't participating in that so I have it on my calendar every day I can look and see what I need to be doing and doing those posts the peak interest posts my birthday posts um and it's just helped me get more um you know more people interested and commented on what I'm doing sharing my posts and 
um, I feel like I was really slacking on that. So the calendar has definitely helped me stay more on track. Um, have I been 100%? No, but am I getting there? Absolutely. Good, good. And that's what we want. We want progress. You're not going to be able to make, implement all these changes at one time. That's why it's week by week. We're giving you a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, Tina, I saw your message. You said, you, yep, come off mute. Well, what happened? I can't hear you. Is your mic on? Uh, the baby was sick. It was a crazy week. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So you didn't get to use your calendar at all? No, but I got I got my planner here. And I'm okay. like, this week we're going in strong. Okay. All right. I want to hear a report from you next week. Because this is this is what it is. We have... You have to be flexible. It's not going to be black and white with everybody. You're going to have to learn how to help your new business partner uh, adjust this business to their life, not your life, right? I do it full time, right? But Corey works, right? So I can't expect her calendar to look like my calendar, right? I, so it's so important that you build those relationships um, with your business partners and understand what they have going on in their life. How many hours a week do they have that they can commit to the business um, consistently? That's why we have the game plan interview. And then you work with that. If they say, I can only work the business five hours a week, okay, then you're going to show them what they need to do during those five hours a week. Don't try to push them to do 20, right? They ain't going to be able to do all the meetings. All the meetings would eat up that five hours, right? So we want them to be doing income producing activities. So keep that in mind. All right. I'm, I'm excited for what we're going to go over today because this is Director, like- Excuse me, Director Berg, I have a question. Yes. You just mentioned mm -hmm. something about a game plan interview. I've never heard of that before. What is a game plan interview? The game plan interview is- when you, and it should be, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Let me go back here. All right. When you're in your virtual office dashboard and you mm -hmm. click on start it, mm -hmm. And you're going to click on this quick reference guide. This oh, tells okay. you the things that you should go over with your brand new business partner. But this is how, this is what I took to make the 15 day quick start to kind of add some additional things. But even with mine, it starts with the game plan interview. You need to ask them, what is your why for doing this business? Okay. Right. Okay. What, okay. what are you looking for this business to do for you that you haven't been able to accomplish in your life up until this point? Right. Okay. So why is everything? What are your goals? How much time would you commit to your business? Are you going to be coachable? So that's okay. the game plan interview. Okay. Okay. I've seen mm -hmm. that. All right. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. Anybody else want to comment about the calendar and how it's uh, made a change or impact in their business now that they're using one? I'll I go. Go. What do you think? I'll go after Chanel. I'll go after you. Okay, Chanel. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good evening. So with mines, I have a habit of buying planners every year, pretty planners, all the colored pens. I'm going to commit to it, the stickers, the washi tape, and I don't use it. I probably use it the first time, write my name in the book, and it sits there. Now... I actually committed to doing it this week. So thanks to the bootcamp, I actually filled in the calendar. But hearing you guys talk, I learned that there's a lot of things I was not inputting. Like you mentioned some of the non-negotiables. So I need to put that in. It did help me curb some of the bad wasteful habits that I have. I was mm -hmm. able to say, okay, I don't have time to okay, sit on wait, binge wait, watch this no, show. That's good. I'm glad you brought that up. Talk about some of the bad habits because we I all mean, them. Like picking up your phone and scrolling through, I have to tell myself, hey, you could have been doing X, Y, and Z. Go pick up your planner and see what you have to do. Mm -hmm. I also, I think somebody mentioned it, Ruth. I also work a job where I'm on call for like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So I always had this mindset of, oh, I don't have enough time. But this year I said, I started in September. 
I said, I can't be putting in so much time into somebody else's business and I have my own to grow. I mean, I still have to work, of course, but I'm definitely more organized. I have more stuff to fill in because I just did basic stuff. I did, you know, the regular typical workday stuff, but there's things that I do throughout the day that I don't capture and I realize the importance of putting everything down. Mm-hmm. So week two. That's good. Thank you for sharing. Who was the other person that was going to speak? That was me, that, that Norma. Oh, Norma, yes. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay, so I did, in fact, was started my calendar before the boot camp because I have the awesome Director Brown that coaches me. But um, this week, what I did was um, I literally just do my best to stick to it 100% because what I was doing was just in the planner, I was just doing putting in my business mostly. But this week I put, I have um, a schedule for my daycare because I run a daycare and it starts at seven in the morning. But this time I put the daycare, what I'm doing right throughout the day with the daycare when they're doing um, arts and crafts, when they're doing all of that. Usually I just block out the whole thing and say, all right, it's daycare hours. But from eight from seven thirty to four thirty. But what I did was every little thing, and I set a timer. Like Director Brown t- instruct me, set a timer. So you what, not just for the daycare, but for everything. You set a timer the moment you start it, because you're only giving it fifteen minutes. Just set the timer, and then as soon as the timer stop, you just go on to the next thing instead of okay, no, that that runs over into that. So I am literally having it with me right now, and this is an awesome one for network marketing. That's so many details into this one. Um, it has helped me balance myself this week. I cried a little, <laughs> but I get back on the R's and I just start writing again. And that's what you're going to find out, that you're going to drop off a little, but you adjust. Right, right. Uh, Shia Payne, she said, I used mine, made me realize I need a bigger one. Talk about it. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so I used mine, um, and it really just made me realize that I needed a bigger one. So I um, have a elderly grandmother who requires 24-hour care, so my schedule outside of work is already jam-packed with a bunch of stuff. So when we did the, um, the training last week, filling in all of those miscellaneous things that I thought I had a handle on, I'm like, dang, like, <laughs> I've already filled this up, so I need a bigger one so I can continuously add in um, you know, a few extra things to make sure that I'm staying on top of my business and my work schedule, as well as staying on top of the schedules that I have. So I purchased another one, so I'm ready. Okay, that's good. Did anybody realize that they need to delegate? Because you- I have. Okay, Uh, let me say this. I had a a new business partner and when we start, and Debbie, you know about this because she's in that chat. And when she started and we started talking about schedule and time and she said, and she has five kids, all different ages. And she said, I need to pause and step back from the business because I just realized I do too much for my kids. And I now need to retrain my kids to do the things that they should be doing for themselves so that I can work the business. And it was because of activities like this. So who wants to speak on, uh, Ruth, talk about that, what you just said. Oh yeah, that was the conversation this weekend um, because my Monday through Friday, I refuse to work over because my job is so intense. So I have to pretty much dumb down per se. Mm -hmm. So I've dedicated all of Saturday, all of Sunday to do what I need to do. So, you know, the common conversation is what's for dinner. Oh, there's a freezer in the garage. There's a refrigerator in the garage. There's a refrigerator in the house. Y'all figure it out. This is what I need to do. And we're going to be on board because if I don't do it this way, it's not going to happen. I love it. I love it. I love it. Anybody else? Director um, Burke. Yes. For me, I had to delegate. I also run a herbal business, online herbal business that I run. And I realized that because I was so focusing on this business, 
a lot of the things that I used to do in that business was you know, going down, as you said, you know, you could jack of all trades and master of none. So I was mastering this business because I feel like I knew what I needed to know. So I had to delegate, um, help, getting help from people, to, from people to take responsibility for my herbal side of the business. But at least I know I had to spend some money to do so, but at least I know I couldn't do it all. So I had to get some help. That's good. That's good. Anybody else? My whole grocery list changed when I started this business. I used to buy, you know, the packages of, of pork chops and chicken, you know, stuff that you got to clean and season and all of that. Mm -mm. I bought frozen stuff that the Burke boys can cook on their own or crock pot stuff that I could just dump in the crock pot before I leave for work. And then we, we ate out a lot. It was a lot of frozen pizzas. It was, they ate, they wasn't hungry. This is my point. I, right. I had to change. I had to change my uh, grocery list as well. Um, and I don't. I really don't cook anymore. Um, probably once out of the week, I cook. My husband he does the cooking throughout the week, and I also order just you know quick things that the kids can just pop in on their own. So uh, yeah, my my grocery list did change. Okay. Anybody else realize that they need to delegate, that they're, they've overcommitted themselves to doing things and they need to delegate or put some things on the shelf so that they can work this business. Anybody? No? All right. All right. So let's move on to the topic for today. First thing we're going to go over is and, and it, most of this focus is going to be around PS3. All right. So if you struggle with PS3, that is our system for how we build the business and make the money. And if you don't, if you don't master the PS3, you ain't gonna make no money in this business. So PS3, peak interest, show the plan, three-way call. Now, is there anybody on the line who does not have the Planet Marketing mobile app? Everybody has the mobile app? Okay, great. I'm going to share my screen just for the people that are on the Zoom watching the replay um, because I want to show you where this some of this training is in the mobile app. So when you're in your mobile app, you're going to click on Get Started, go to Training Videos, and these first three videos break down the PS3. So if you have not watched How Do I Peak Interest, show the plan, basic training, and three-way call, that is where you need to start, okay? Make sure you watch those three videos. Um, and then there's an older video that uh, Mr. Moore did called PS3 System, all right? But what I wanna talk about first is showing the plan. There are five ways that you can show the plan to a prospect that is interested in this business. And I wanna make sure everybody knows about the five plans, the five ways. Number one, videos. Videos are the easiest and simplest way to show the plan. Why? Because it's not scheduled. So when you have someone like a Ruth Daly, who is during her cat season where she's 12 hours on, 12 hours off, guess what? Asking her to get on a seven or eight o'clock webinar is not gonna work for her. So if I wanted to expose her to the business, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send her some videos that she could watch when it's convenient for her. Make sense? Second way, webinars. Webinars are a great way to expose people to the business, again, the downside is if it does not, if it's not convenient for them, you're in trouble. You may be a great inviter, but like I gave the example before, if the webinar starts at eight and your prospect says, yes, I'm gonna be on, and then their mama call them at 7.45, you know that's not going to be a quick 15, right, Corey? It ain't going to be a 15-minute 15, 15 conversation. And now you've missed the opportunity to expose your client. So my suggestion is anytime you invite someone to a webinar and they commit and say, yes, I will be on, 
I want you to go ahead and send them the preview ITA and preview rep videos. This way it gives them just the concept of what our business is about without all the detail, but just by them seeing the concept of what our business is about, that's going to put even more of a priority on them to make sure that they get on the webinar. It's kind of like, you know, Christmas Eve, you know how the kids, they're like, can I oh, do, just open one gift? Just one, right? You just don't, because you want them to be excited for all the rest of the gifts they're going to get. And so if they've watched the preview videos and now mom calls at 745, they're like, mom, I got this webinar to get out. I'll call you after the webinar because they got a taste of something. Or what if something just happens and they really just, whatever, they cannot get on that eight o'clock. At least they seen the previews. They've been exposed to something, not everything, not enough, but they've been exposed to something, right? So we have videos, webinars, and then we have the corporate hotel meetings, the weekly meetings. Now I'm gonna share my screen again because everybody should know how to access their weekly meetings. So again, when you're on your Planet Marketing mobile app, you wanna to go to Info Center and Company News. And you can click on any day of the week and see where are these meetings. So tomorrow, there's a meeting in Queens, New York, Charlotte, North Carolina, Florida and Jamaica. We go to Tuesday, we got the Atlanta meeting, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Baltimore, Maryland, New Orleans. Nothing on Wednesday. We, Thursday, we got Richmond, Virginia, Tampa, Florida, Houston, Texas, Ontario, California, Charleston, South Carolina, Chicago, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Kingston, Jamaica, Oxon Hill. Nothing on Friday. Saturday, we have a Hanover, Maryland. That's the core tour. So that's a super Saturday. And then Pittsburgh. Everybody should know where their weekly meeting is and it should go on your calendar. You should be there to support the meeting. Sometimes you need the meeting and sometimes the meeting needs you. We need the evidence in the room, right? When they, when they say, you know, who's a bronze builder and you're a bronze builder and you get to, you know, wave that you're a bronze builder, you know how impactful that is to the guests? They're like, wow, look at all these people who were able to bring three people in the business. That helps close people. When they bring the goal builders up and they run out of space in front of the room, you know how impactful that is to close your guests when they see all those people brought in nine people, a minimum? Sometimes you need the meeting and sometimes the meeting needs you. Do you know we as directors who have our card on the door, Planet Marketing, the, we pay for those, those rooms. We pay for it. And so we're counting on the business partners to show up with their $10 to help cover the cost, but you get to invite as many guests as you want. Now, some of you might be thinking like I was when I first started, why show up every time? I already know everything, but can you present? as well as the people in front of the room? Can you present? That is where you're gonna learn, especially how to break down the compensation plan because that's where people usually struggle is how, to, how do I explain, how do I do the second part of this presentation? It's going to the meetings where you're gonna learn how to do that. So you gotta show up. And I'm telling you, when your guests show up to those meetings, they're going to want to sign up. When they see the evidence in the room and they get, and then take them to meet the leader that's presenting at the end, introduce them. Let them know you have layers of leadership. Because it might be that, that leader, that presenter's story that really spoke to your guests. 
And guess what? The leader, the, pres the presenter, they're going to help close your client, your prospect. Right? So we have videos, webinars, the corporate meetings, and then we have PBRs, private business receptions, private business receptions. Sometimes you may hear people refer to them as travel parties. I try not to use that term because it confuses people with the Intel travel travel parties. So let's call them private business receptions. This is where you get a group of people, you invite guests to your living room and either you or a senior business partner share the plan with them. Either you're gonna do the PowerPoint presentation or you might do a plug and play where you just share your story, right? Play the big picture video. And then you have a senior business partner on standby that can answer questions. Private business receptions, PBRs. Now, if you really serious about securing directorship, you should be doing a PBR once a week. Once a week, pick a day of the week where you block an hour, hour and a half, and that is your PBR night. For me, it's Wednesday nights at seven. And so as I'm out and about doing what I do throughout the day, if I meet someone at Ross, at Publix, I can invite them to the PBR. My neighbor. Now, don't go inviting strangers to your home, but you understand what I'm saying? You're going to build relationships. You're going to build rapport with people. And if you don't have, if your house is not set up in a way where you can provide a professional business presentation, then team up with a team member that lives in the area. Make an arrangement with your mama. And we'll talk more about PBRs um, a little bit later, but that is what you want to do. And that's going to also help you to get out of your house. You cannot build this business behind your computer. You got to get out and meet people and expand your network. So we have videos, webinars, the corporate hotel meetings, PBRs. And then the fifth one is going to be the 24 hour on demand call. Did you know that there was a phone number that you could dial into and hear a nine minute presentation with Mr. Bradley, Andy Cawthon and James Ferrara? How many of you knew that? So I'm gonna show you where to go. Again, from your mobile app, if you click on Info Center, Company News, it's right here, On Demand Business Overview. So everyone should add this phone number to your cell phone contacts. And listen to it yourself so you know exactly what they're saying, but they're giving a business overview. It's not a full-on presentation, but it, it is a business overview. So those are the five ways to expose people to the business. Any questions about that? No questions? All right. Now we're gonna get into Jappy 2.0. So my first Jappy, I had a script. And let me tell you, let me first say this about scripts. The reason why some people are very, what's the word I want to use? Some people are very sophisticated with their words. I was not. And so when I started the business, and I needed to pique people's interest, I was scared to death because I did not know what to say. And it may sound weird. Some people just say, you just talk to them. It's just a conversation. No, for me, it wasn't. 
because that I, I fro I literally would freeze up. Anybody else freeze up when you you see someone you want to prospect, but you're just like, I just don't know what to. That was me. I, I didn't know how to finesse my words to say because I didn't even know what to say. And so it's very challenging to get someone to duplicate what they haven't seen or experienced. And at the time I had built my business on social media, just posting, but I was an influencer and didn't know it. So my team wasn't making any money because they couldn't do what I did. Just posting on social media and having people say, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. That's how I got to One Star Director. Never seeing the presentation, there were no webinar, none of that. I, I was an influencer. I posted. People said I was interested. Had a conversation with them. Boom, they signed up. That's not duplicatable. So I had to learn how to peak interest. Destiny, I see your hand up. Yeah, I think for me, it's just that, especially, you know, when you are promoting on social media and you have family and friends or people that have known you for years and then they know you get into a new business. For me, it's just sounding authentic because, you know, obviously they know I've started the business 30 days ago. So I made that much money in, in 30 days mm -hmm. just from the business. So I'm a results person. So I also like, you know, I see other people's results, but I also like it to be true and authentic when I share it too. And I'm like, yeah, this happened for me. So it hasn't happened yet for me in this business, but I still mm -hmm. want to, you know, be able to promote it, you know, as well. So that's kind of what I struggle with too. It's like, I'm sharing what I've heard happens for other people, but it hasn't yet happened for me. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Let's talk about first, what is your role as a planet marketing rep? Guess what? Your role is not to sign somebody up. Your role is not to uh, talk about how much money you made. Cause guess what, Destiny? Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. really I'm, I'm being honest nobody cares how much money destiny made what people care about is what's in it for them because what you made ain't gonna pay their bills right mm -hmm. it's not about that so it's not about that so your role i want y'all to write this down your role as a planet marketing rep is simply to find people that are open to looking at ways to earn additional income. That's it. That's your role. It is not to explain the business. It is not to tell them how much money you make. Yeah, you're gonna have a story as you go through the business, but if we were to, Destiny, if we were to think about it the way you're thinking about it, what if you don't make money until your eighth month? Are you not going to talk about the business for eight months until you make, you understand what I'm saying? You got, you're you going to make money along the way. Your story is going to change and evolve. But your role as a planet marketing rep is to find people that are open to looking at ways to earn additional income. If they're not open to looking, if they're not looking, you're not talking. And to, to what you posted in the chat, Ruth, she said, I don't want to sound like a salesperson. Good. We don't want you to sound like a salesperson. We're not selling anything. All we're doing is sharing information with people that are telling us that they're looking for something. So you have to talk to people to find out, are they looking first? If they're looking, then you're not selling. And I'm gonna give you all an illustration. I see your hand, Corey, let me do the illustration. Imagine you had to go to, you had a black tie event, ladies. Javon, this is gone, and David, y'all just, you know, and Leroy, y'all just, just, just roll with me on this with the ladies for a moment. But ladies, you're going to a black tie event. You have this beautiful dress, but the back goes all the way down and you can't wear that normal bra you wear. You got to get a special bra for this dress. So you go to the mall and you're like, I got to go to Vicky's. I need a new bra. Gentlemen, Vicky's is Victoria's Secrets, for those of you who don't know. I got to go to Vicky's. So you go to Vicky's, and as soon as you walk in, the sales lady says, 
how can I help you? Can I help you find anything today? And you say, yes, I got this beautiful dress, but the back got the scoop of this all out. I can't wear the bra, I need a... She's like, I got you, I got you. So she takes you to the back, she measures you, and then she provides you with three options. And you're like, oh, I got my dress, right? You so happy. So now you, you purchase your new bra and you walk out of the mall, but you know, as you walk down, they got the little kiosk. Right, they got the sunglass hut, they got the people selling the cell phone cases and the hair, and the, right. And so, the cell phone guy is coming over to you, hey, mommy, mommy, come over here, come over here. I got you. Look and look, I got this. This would be nice. Da, 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 da. And they're annoying. Matter of fact, you just bought a cell phone case a month ago, you don't even need one. But here, this guy is trying to sell you a cell phone case. So, here's what I want you to see. Both people are salespeople. But did you look at the Victoria salesperson as a, as, a, as a salesperson? No. She helped you with something you needed. Whereas the kiosk person, he didn't even bother to ask you if you needed a cell phone case. You're just a number to him. He just wants to make a sale for the day. Don't be the kiosk person. Be the Victoria's Secrets person. And if you can get that, you can sell this business to anybody. Because you just got to find the people that are open to looking. Who wants to, Corey, what was your, I saw your hand up. Go ahead. Now I don't know if I can follow it after that analogy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because what I was thinking was, you know, she was saying, um, Destiny was saying that since she was new in the business and I had those same thoughts. And um, I was told that, you know, whenever we had like new business partners that came up, even though we didn't directly sign those people, they, they're still our business partners. Mm -hmm. And so we can put that on our page. And so, you know, um, the people who are viewing our page, they don't really know any better. So mm -hmm. as we're posting and congratulating our new business partners, all the people who are viewing our pages, all they see is, oh, you know, Destiny, your, 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 your company is, is growing. What's right. going on with your company? And that uh, that is something that will pique interest. Yes, so. yes. But this scenario that I'm giving is you're out and about. <laughs> what you're describing on social media, when you post and announce, and announce a new business partner, that is marketing. That's not peaking. Peaking is when I have a conversation with you. Posting on social media is marketing. Don't mix the two up. The only okay. people that are successful with marketing are people who have influence. You could be a stay-at-home mom. You've been a stay-at-home mom for, for 10 years. You don't have a big network. You can't just post all over social media and think you're going to build a network. You have no influence. You don't know anybody. But I'm describing when you're out and about how you can peak interest, have a conversation with someone. What I'm saying is the way you avoid sounding like a salesperson is we find the people that are looking for ways to make money. Just, just remember the analogy I just gave you. Be the Victoria's Secrets person. If they're not looking, you're not talking. Because if you start talking to someone about this business before they have revealed to you that they have a need or a problem, you're now a salesperson. Mm -hmm. you're now that car salesman <laughs> that you can't stand that's following you around the parking lot don't be them find write this down find the need and meet it find the need and meet it find the hurt and heal it find the hurt and heal it find the problem and solve it Find the problem and solve it. And here's my contribution to it. Identify their nightmare so you can sell them their dream. 
right? So for example, Ruth's working, she hates cat five season, cat season. She hates the 12 hours. She's, she's done. She's been doing it for years. She's sick and tired of it. If I know that about her, that's a need. She needs to not be doing that. That's the problem, right? She has no life during that season. None. She can't make plans with anybody because when she's off, she's tired. She just want to sleep. She don't want to talk to nobody. She don't want to go nowhere. She's like, I need a new, I don't want to do this anymore. So I'm going to say, Ruth, if I could show you a way to make some additional income from home so that within the next two to five years, you could leave that job. Is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? She's going to be like, heck yeah. If you got something that's going to help me get out this job, I want to know about it. But I had to identify the need. If she loves her job, I'm not going to talk to her. That's not going to be what I use to peep her. If she loves her job, I'm not trying to get her to quit her job that she loves. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to get more into that in a minute. Leroy? All right, I'm following what you're saying. Um, like this um, this past weekend, I went to the mall, and sometimes I would go in the mall and take business cards with me. So as I was passing by one kiosk, there was a guy, a couple of guys that was handing out, uh, I think they were selling like uh, gospel on uh, DVDs or what CDs. Mm -hmm. He was talking to me about it. And when the guys got together, when I, when I made my donation to him, I asked the guys, uh, do they travel? Mm -hmm. And the guy was like, oh yeah, who are you? So I gave him a card and he was like, so you're traveling? And I said, yes. He said, man, my wife was just talking about that this morning. I said, well, here's the business cards. And I said, you can, uh, I'll tell him about the business just a little bit. And I also told him, okay, if you was interested in also getting to the business, then you can also uh, let me know too. So I gave them information. They were supposed to be on the call tonight. I'm, I'm not sure if they were or not. They didn't, they didn't contact me. But just like the other lady was saying, it's almost like when you, we're not trying to sell to people, but we're just trying to help people. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, when you, when you, like when I, when I see somebody, I see somebody in the mall, I, we're so busy, we want to make a sale because I've been there since October and done anything yet. And that kind of bothers me a little bit. So you're like, okay, I got to make a sale. Like I got to help this person. I got to, I got to, I got to get a business partner. But you gotta, but when you start looking at it, like you're saying tonight, okay, you gotta find the need and meet it. Somebody's heard, you gotta help them. And then identify the nightmare and sell the dream. But you, you also gotta step back and look, okay, look, okay, I'm here to help somebody. I know I need this, I know I need it. it, it and I guess in some way it'll fall in line, but you just gotta follow the process. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, you have to, there has to be value in the invitation. So like where you asked that person, do you travel? And they said, yeah, I wouldn't have just gave them the card. I would have, they ultimately they would have gotten the card and I would have gotten their information. But I would have said, if I could show you a way to earn income on the travel that you're already doing, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? That's different than just saying, yeah, I'm a travel agent. Here's a card, get on the webinar, right? Uh, Kimberly. Uh oh, yes, I had something very interesting happen to me the other day, speaking of just being out and about and having your business cards with you. About a month ago, I went to um, just out and about, went to Chick-fil-A, and one of the guys was so energetic that I couldn't pass him up. He was just so pleasant, so all of that. And so I did ask him if he was interested in making additional income outside of what he was doing. And I could tell that he, you know, loved his job. He's very energetic. So he was like, yeah, sure. So I did give him a business card. I didn't get his information or anything like that. And so it was so funny. Fast forwarding to uh, this past Saturday, I went to the same Chick-fil-A drive through same guy was there. And so I said, hey, I said, you were supposed to be calling me. He said, you know what? He said, and I am going to call you. He said, I went to the website. He was able to quote me how much it costs and everything. He was like, yes, I'm very interested. And then he said, yeah, I see how you roll. And he looked at my car. He didn't know I've been driving my same car for six years. But anyway, he's like, yeah, I see how you roll. I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. And so it was just interesting. Like I said, Chick-fil-A, you know, just my normal daily activity, not, you know, anything special, but you know, he was someone who, who checked it out and I didn't think he would, but he did and quoted the price and everything. So just want to say that's good. <laughs> that's good, Kimberly. Write this down, y'all. You don't have to go out to prospect, but prospect while you're out. You do not have to go out to prospect, but prospect while you're out. 
before I left Vegas, I went to Publix and uh, the lady, I, I started striking up a conversation with the cashier, the bagger, and then there was another lady standing next to it. And the bagger asked me, you know, what, what my plans were for the weekend. I said, oh, I'm getting ready to go to Vegas. And they're all like, ooh, Vegas, Vegas, Vegas. I said, yeah, I'm a travel business owner and I help position people who want to earn extra income on the money-making side of the travel industry. Are you open? They're all like, yes, I'm interested. I'm interested. Because do you think they want to work at Publix? Make a minimum wage? So I was able to give each of them a business card. And I said, on Wednesday nights, I do a presentation because I'm literally like five minutes from Publix. I said, on Wednesday nights, I do a presentation at my home if you're interested. And then I, I have the QR code on the back. And so I showed everybody, I was like, scan this code. It takes you to the big picture video. And if you like what you see, the next QR code takes you to my online calendar. Well, guess what? Angela, I got a text randomly that said more info. I'm like, who text me more info? Because the name is, there's no name. It's just a random number that's not in my phone. And I said, thank you for your interest in the travel business. May I ask who this is? And she said, Angela from Publix. And I said, oh, great, Angela, are you available for a call? Listen, I'm going to Vegas, but I'll be back on Monday. And she's like, that's cool. Cause I'm, I'm you know, I got a cold or whatever. I should be good. I said, yeah. And then I sent her the flyer for the webinar. I said, if you get a chance over the next few days, I want you to get on one of these webinars. And then I'm gonna follow up with you when I get back from Vegas. I didn't go out to prospect, but I prospected while I was out. All right. So let's get into the script. Let's get back to the script. I, when I started the business, like I said, I was not smooth. I didn't know how to finesse my words to even prospect or what to say anything. So I personally needed some type of script that could show me what the conversation looked like. And once I knew what the conversation should look like, then I can make it my own. So I don't sound like I'm reading a script. And it's just like in Hollywood. Do you realize that the actors, they get a script and they read it to get the idea of what the story is supposed to be, but they don't, when they're actually acting, they're not reading word for word or memorizing word for word, the exact script. They're taking the conversation and making it their own. So that's what the scripts do. You have to personalize it. You don't want to sound like a robot. So what I'm going to share with you are my three main ways that I pique interest. And really, all you got to kind of do is kind of memorize it, and then you'll kind of be able to personalize it based on the situation. So y'all ready? All right. This first one is called Options Open. Very simple. Do you keep your options open to making additional streams of income outside of what you currently do as a, all you need to know is what does the person do for a living? Remember, our role is to find people that are open to looking at ways to earn additional income. If they're open, we're gonna expose them. If they're not, then we're just gonna ask for a referral and let them know we can book their travel. I Now this one works very, very good with your cold market. These are the people that you do not know. This might be the Chick-fil-A person. This might be the Publix person. This might be your, your nail tech. This might be the person sitting next to you on the plane. This might be the person you meet at a vendor event. This might be the person you meet at a party. This might be your coworker. You just need to know what they do for a living and ask them if they're open to additional streams of income. Now, I use this one every time me and my husband go out to eat. When the server brings us the check, I tell them they provide a great service. I'm always looking for sharp people like them. Just curious, are you keeping your options open to making additional streams of income outside of working here? This is my go-to when I'm out and about. 
this is how I pulled the Publix person. They're either open or not. And the key word is additional. I still want you to personalize this, but you want to make sure you say additional because we're not telling people quit your teaching job and come do what I do. No, people have multiple bills. They need multiple streams of income because they may love their job and they may get paid very well to do it, but that doesn't mean they wouldn't want some additional streams of income. Any questions about this? Simple, easy, right? All right, so let's move on. Go ahead, Aisha. Yeah, I just have an odd question. Have you ever went out uh, and then peak interest to someone only to find out that they're actually already in the business? Um, I have that out in the public. I've had it on social media where I've peaked someone and they told me they were in the business. And I'm like, I couldn't tell from your page because of course I'm going to go to their page before I peak them, but they, they weren't marketing on their page. So I didn't even know they were in the business. Anybody else? All right. Y'all got that one. Easy. Can y'all do that? And that sound like a salesperson. It's just a question. It's not a conversation. It's a question, right? All right. Let's move on to the next one. This one I call fill the need. Well, actually, let's go, let's go back to this first one. So I just gave you an example of how you could use this when you're out and about, but let's talk about how you could use this on social media. Let's say you're scrolling and you come across someone who's a real estate agent right? And you check out their page, right? They sell real estate. Now you can private message them and say, you know, hey, Maria, I see you, you know, have a successful uh, real estate business. Just curious, are you keeping your options open to making additional streams of income outside of real estate? It's a yes or a no. Either she's open or she's not. And most of the time on through social media, you can tell what people do for a living. But just make sure before you do that, you, you comment on their posts, you like their posts. You know what I'm saying? Don't just hit someone cold randomly. Build some rapport with them, right? Oh, that's a beautiful house. Comment on one of their listings or something or ask them a question or something. Build the rapport, all right? Next one, build the need. If I could show you how to earn some additional income from home so that you could, it's whatever the need is. What is the problem? What is the hurt? What is the nightmare? That's what you fill in here. Is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? This is perfect for your warm market. These are the people that you know. These are your family members. These are your friends. These are your coworkers. These are, these are your sorority, fraternity brothers and sisters. You know what's going on in their life. You know their kids. You've been in their home. You, you, you send them Christmas cards. You know their birthday. These are the people you know. You want to know how to peak your, your, your family? This. Because you know your sister is a single mom struggling. You know your, your cousin wants to buy a house and is tired of living in an apartment. You know your best friend is on section eight and she's trying like hell to get off of it. You know your coworker hates their job because that's all they do is complain about it all day while y'all working. So if I know that Luce wants to get out of the daycare business because it's, it's keeping her a slave to her home. And she's like, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm burnt out. I'm going to say, Luce, if I could show you how to earn some additional income from home so that you could, you know, close your daycare in the near future, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? And she's going to say, absolutely. Why? Because I made it about her. Not about me trying to expose my business. Not about me trying to sell an ITA. It was her need. 
right? If I see someone on Facebook talking about how they just got into a car accident, totaled their car, they need a vehicle. Now they got to do Uber Lyft. So sorry you got into a car accident. Are you okay? Da, da, da. Right, but I'm a peak on. If I could show you how to earn some additional income from home so that you could buy a new car, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? People will always say yes if it's in their best interest. Nobody's going to say no to something that's in their own best interest. Nobody. If, let's say Vera has a child that just got accepted into Howard University. She's celebrating on Facebook or whatever. I'm a dumb slide in her DM. Say, hey, I see Charles got accepted into Howard. Congratulations. Good job. You know, what's he majoring in? Has he picked a major yet? I'm a small talk with her. She's excited. I'm excited. But guess what I know she needs? What does she need? Money. Gotta pay that, that tuition. Tuition money. <laughs> right? So I'm gonna say, Vera, if I could show you how to earn some additional income from home to help pay cash for college so Charles doesn't have to graduate with a whole bunch of student loan debt, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? What's she gonna say? Who thinks she would say no? Exactly, nobody. Because would you? Because it wasn't about me trying to get her to see what I do. It wasn't about me trying to sell her an ITA. I'm not going to come at her with, let me show you how you can save on travel. She could care less about travel. She got a kid going to Howard University. And guess what? She don't care that it's travel. I could be selling bling bling cell phone holders. And all Vera going to want to know, right, Vera? Tanisha, how many cell phone holders do I need to sell to help pay cash for college? The blessing, the cherry on the top is that we sell recess. It's travel. When she finds out it's just travel agency, she's going to be like, oh, this is going to be easy. I know a whole bunch of people who travel. Find the need. Questions about that one. And that one is the most effective out of all of them. Easy? Okay. All right. So let's go to the third one. I've tweaked this one a little bit. This one is called Loves to Travel. And we know who they are. They always post it on IG. They on somebody's plane, someone's island. You know, they're always, you know these people, they live for their next vacation. Hey, hey Kim, I know you love to travel. Have you ever considered becoming a travel business owner so that you can do more of what you love and earn income? A lot of people don't know that they could get paid on a travel that they're already, they and their friends and family are already doing. You could do more of what you love and earn income. Who would say no to getting paid of what they, doing what they love to do? Nobody. Again, we just want to expose them. Whether they sign up or not, not our responsibility. Your role is just to expose as many people as you can as fast as you can. People that are looking. Questions about that, those, those three scripts. Any questions about that? Feedback. Do you feel it's easy? Do you feel that it's something that you can do without sounding scripted? Uh, Destiny? Um, yeah, no, I think the scripts are easy. I actually used the second one earlier last week um, on my sister-in-law um, because she's always, you know, talking to me about her financial situation and everything. And she actually did come to one of the webinars 
and she is definitely interested. She just needs to, you know, get her funds together for the one ninety nine. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. I did use that script on her, and so I was able to make it more personalized. I think the only problem is like when it comes to that, then they want to ask you a bunch of questions because they know it's you, and they want so just making sure to cut it off. I'm glad you like, brought that up. I'm glad you yeah. brought that up. So let's let's talk about that. And and just so you all know, the play that I'm going to call, um, I'm posting the Jappy 2.0 training that I did. It's going to go into more detail. Um, I'm posting that in the group. So that's one of the assignments is for you to watch that training video. Take some notes, right? Um, but you never want, again, we want the tool to explain the business, right? And I gave y'all the five ways to explain the business, right? The videos, the webinar, right? Those are the, we want that to explain the business because think about this destiny. Let's say you're brand new in the business. You, as a matter of fact, you are brand new in the business, right? So destiny, would you agree that at this point you could probably explain 20% of the business really, really well? Would that be fair to say for someone who's just been in the business a few months? Yeah, okay. just the compensation part I will get hung up on, but yeah, probably the first <laughs> 20. She can explain 20%, uh, 20% very, very well. So now her sister, right? She wants to peak her sister. And let's say Destiny takes the 20% that she knows and she does a great job explaining the 20%. Here's the problem. Her sister is now making a business decision on just 20% of the information. Is that fair to her sister? No. Not when Destiny got to see 100% of the information, either through a webinar or a hotel meeting or a video. Why? We don't want, to, we want people to see it the same way we saw it. And here's the problem. Let's say Destiny does so well with her 20%. And because it's her sister, her sister says, I'm going to join. Yep, I'm going to make this decision. I'm going to join. You gave me 20%, but that's enough for me, sis. If you win it, I know it got to be good. But guess what the new sister is going to do? She's not going to talk to anybody in the business until she know everything. So she ain't going to make no money because she she feels like she needs to learn everything so that she can explain the way her sister explained. And that is not, that's not the PS3. How you were brought in the business is how people think they supposed to do the business. So if you do it wrong, guess what they gonna do? Wrong. Everything duplicates good and bad. Write that down. Everything duplicates good and bad. So you gotta get it right the first time. Now, if it is someone you know, it's your best friend, it's your, it's your sister or whatever. And yeah, you, you, you can't avoid them, right? <laughs> they might live with you, right? What are you going to talk about? Your experience. Talk about your why. Talk about the training you, you've gone through, Destiny. Talk about the leadership. Talk about the trips you're planning to take. Those are the things that you can talk about. But don't talk about how the business works and all of that. Because you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Make sense? Questions, comments, feedback on that? All right. Let's talk about weekly goals. And again, if anybody needs to get off, it's okay. It's in the boot camp group. You can come back and watch the replay, okay? But I got two more things to actually kind of one, one but two. We're going to talk about weekly goals. Now, when I do one-on-ones with people, based on how much time they tell me they can commit to the business weekly, I give them a weekly goal for their business. Not the daily, because guess what? If Ruth is working a 12-hour shift, she ain't gonna be able to peak as much. But if she's off on Saturday, that's going to be the day where she goes hard. She's going to be that weekend warrior. So it's going to look different for everyone. So this is what we're going to talk about right now is very key to your DMO. Very key to your DMO. You need to know how many hours a week can you commit to this business consistently? 
Now, when we talk about the weekly goals, I'm talking about income producing activities. This is not about posting. This is not about being on the INV. This has nothing to do with reading the books that we want you to read. Yes, you need to do all those things. You need to find time to do it. But I'm talking about if you only have five hours a week to work this business, those five hours should be doing the P, the S, and the three. And you just need to find some other way to do all the other stuff. You listen to the IMV, the replay. You take a bath that night, read the book whatever i'm talking about the income producing activity that's going to help you make the money that's why this boot camp is different we focus in on the income producing activity we're not focused on marketing where you just post and stuff no that's not the work now for someone who typically can put i'm gonna say 20 to 25 hours a week in the business these are the three things, let me say this. These are the three things that you want to track. Peaks, exposures, and three ways. That's it, that's what you're tracking. Peaks, exposures, and three ways. We're not tracking signups, why? Because you can't control that. So this is just a formula that I kind of created. You ain't got to use it. This is just the world according to Tanisha. For the average person that can work the business anywhere from 20, 25, even up to 30 hours a week, the goal that I give them for peaks for the week is 70. 70 peaks. And how are they peaking? Using one of the three scripts? Easy. How you wanna break that down? Your business. That's on you, how you break it down. You might say, oh, 70 a week, 10 people a day, I can do that. I can do that. Now, the key to hitting the 70, you must on Sunday, let's say Sunday night, you must have the list of who the 70 people are Sunday night. So that when it comes to Monday at eight o'clock and that's the time you block to do the peak, you already got your people that you're peaking. If you don't have the list, and that is why we did that exercise two weeks ago, making your list. If you don't have the list of who those 70 people are, you will never hit that weekly goal. I guarantee it. Debbie, talk about it. Is she still on, Debbie Jones? Oh, she jumped off. She works in the morning. She just left right before you said her name too. Uh, uh, who have I had a one-on-one -on -one with where I gave them their weekly goals? Uh, David. How important is that list? to hitting the weekly goal? Uh, I mean, yeah, I wanna say it's it's definitely important because I mean, it's gonna like keep you on on track of like what you're supposed to, what you're supposed to be doing for that week. So like knowing who you have on that list, it's gonna like, you have something to fall back on. You're not like scrambling on that day, like to find 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 those different people. Right, right. Because when you have that scheduled time for your peaking, you don't want to be scrolling through Facebook like, oh, who am I going to peak? Who am I going to? No, you have to be intentional with your business. That's why we went over how to make the list. That's why I said, if you were in boot camps before and you did posts and you got people who commented and like, they're supposed to be added to the list. Just, you just, you got to keep adding people to the list. The person from Publix, guess what? Adding them to my list, right? The Chick-fil-A guy, add them to your list. Because at some point, and here's the thing, you ain't going to be picky with who the 70 people are. It's the next 70 people that are on the list. That's who you're going to post. Don't get all picky like, oh, I'm not going to post. No, the next 70. Just grab the next 70. Because some of the people that you added to the list, at some point, they might get peaked next month. 
or two months from now, which is perfect because now they've had two months to see what you do on social media where you're building rapport with them. How do we build rapport on social media? Like, comment, like, comment. So now they've seen, they've liked and commented your stuff over two weeks and now they're in that batch of 70 that you're going to peak for that week. That's how you do it. Luce? So um, I started using the tracker that um, my director Brown provided for the boot camp. Um, actually, a couple of weeks before, the director Brown had provided it for us, and then it just a light bulb went off. I'm like, this is the list I will use moving forward, because <laughs> um, it made life much easier. And just FYI, I uh, was able to save it to my Google Drive, which mm -hmm. I could take anywhere with me, because I was worried right. if what if my computer crashed? This is my go-to. So. Um, I was able to start doing that. And then, um, so my question was, when we're peaking that, before we add these people to our list, should we be looking at their page, seeing if they're viable, not, not viable. Um, qualified prospect, yes. Qualified prospects, because like, you know, I'm doing the birthdays every morning and there was one page that had like inappropriate stuff. And I was like, unfriend, um, because I, you know, right. I don't want that, I don't want to see that or whatever. Um, right. So are we doing that before we add them to the list? Yes. Or Nobody should go on the list that you don't feel is a qualified prospect. All right. So then when we go pick our 70, we've already qualified them. That's where. Correct. It yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So when you grab those 70, you know, they are already qualified prospects. Do you have a system as to, not a system or suggestion um, as to, you know, keeping relationships 70 people in one week is a lot, but then you have the 70 you did in the prior week and then the 70, you know, so do you have a system or a suggestion as to how you just keep in touch with everybody, you know, you're touching. Right, people. and that's where the tracker comes in. Because you, you may peak all 70, but all 70 aren't going to, and remember, you're breaking it up. You're not going to do 70 in one day. This is 70 for the week, right? So let's say you say, you know what, I'm going to do 10 on Monday. Well, not all 10 people are going to respond to, to your message. They may not respond till Friday. So it's not going to be um, something where it's like you're overwhelmed with you got 70 people that you're, uh, no problem, Leroy, uh, you know, 70 people you're going to have to follow up with all at one time. Now, how do I do, how do I follow up? And I think there's another training that I'm going to do on that where I use my, how I, sh I share how I use my cell phone to do my follow-ups. And so basically, if I send you, if I peak your interest, right, today, and I send you a video, I'm now going to put you on my calendar for follow-up tomorrow, because you should be following up within 24 hours of exposing someone to the business. And so if tomorrow you don't show up for your three-way call, I'm gonna move that appointment on my calendar to maybe the next day or the end of the week. I'm just gonna keep moving that appointment on my calendar until I get an absolute yes or no. This way you don't fall through the cracks. And this is also how my calendar dictates my activity. But there's a whole other training for that. And I, I have a training in my YouTube channel on how I use my cell phone. Um, so anybody can go there and look for that. Okay, so again, your goal, if you, were, if you only have 10 hours to work the business, 70 might be too high for you. You might say, you know what, uh, 25. 25 a week for me. Because I don't, I don't have 20 to 30 hours to work this business. If you're working a business full time, it might be more. I don't know. Everybody's situation is going to be different. So, but let's again go with the 20 to 25 hours a week. And your weekly goal is 70 for peaks. Now, exposures, 35. So basically what I'm saying is, out of the 70 people that you pique their interest using one of those three scripts, however, you pique their interest, half of them are going to say, yeah, I'm open to looking. That's reasonable. Would y'all agree that that's reasonable that half of them will say, yeah, I'm open. Anybody think that that's an unrealistic 
expectation that half of them will sit at their open when they do respond. Not saying they're going to respond right away, but at some point when they do respond to your peak, I'm saying at least half of them will say, you yeah, open to looking. That's reasonable, right? So exposures is going to be 35. I'm saying half. Some might, some won't. We're going to split it 50 50. So now we get to the three ways 18. Because now you've exposed the person, you're following up with those 35. And I'm saying with the 35 that you follow up with, where you're saying after having watched the videos or whatever, is this something that you're open to taking a look at? And I'm saying out of the 35, you're going to get at least 18 people that like what they see when they look at those preview ITA, preview rep videos, which is half. I think that's a realistic expectation. So again, this is for someone who can put in 20, 25 hours more a week. Again, 70, 35, 18. Just keep doing half. If you're going to do 20, right? 20 exposures for the week, that ain't nothing. <laughs> That ain't enough, but let's just say 20, right? Then we're going to say, okay, 10 exposures, five three ways. Now, put an asterisk next to the three ways because that is the goal. It's the three ways. The more people you get on the three ways, that's where your money's going to be. And so here's the thing. Let's say Dawn, she peaked 70 people for the week. So now it's Sunday night, right? She grabbed her 70 from her list and throughout the week, she's peaked her 70. She met that goal. But when it came down to the, expo to the three ways, instead of having 18 three ways, she only got five. What does Dawn need to increase the next week? How many people she's peaking? Boom. She got to increase her peak. She's not talking to enough people. Because the real, real goal is the three ways. The more three ways you have, that's where your money's going to come from. You hit the goal of 35 exposures. That's great because now that's more people in your funnel. Eventually, they're going to make their way through the funnel. But that could take six months to a year. They've been exposed, you know, but it's just not the right timing for them. And that's okay. The goal is to get as many people on that three-way call as possible. So you have to be consistent with the 70. And then over time, if you consistent, imagine doing that for six months straight, you hitting 70 people a week. At some point, you're going to hit that 18 three-way call consistently. I promise you, because what's going to happen is you're going to start enrolling some people and then you're going to teach them to do what you're doing. And then soon before you know it, now you're a gold builder. And before you know it, now some of those three-way calls on your calendar are not just your three-way calls, but it's their three-way calls. So now maybe nine of the three-way calls on your calendar are yours, but the other nine are your teams. Wouldn't that be nice? That's what happens naturally. But in the beginning, it's going to be your three-way calls. But if you stay consistent with that and work that into your DMO, I promise you that's what your calendar is going to look like. And I know uh, and I'm going to show it here again, what my calendar looked like when I was working the business full time. It's all these three-way calls, three-way, 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 three-way. That was my goal. Fill up all the white spaces on my calendar with three-way calls. Saturday, right? This is what... Um, Ruth's calendar should look like she don't work on a weekend. This is three-way calls, crazy, right? Block the time for church, but after church, we work in the business. 
It's going to take time. You must be consistent with it. All right, questions? I have a question, Director yes. Burke. So do you do a follow-up after the follow-up? So like say you did the three-way call, you did a follow-up to, you know, because you guys scheduled a follow-up and they're still like, um, I'm still have some questions or I'm not sure ready at this time. So then would you schedule a second follow-up to that? It's called bam, bam, book a meeting from a meeting. And, and your expert who's doing a three-way call is the one that's going to schedule that. So if, if I'm the expert on the phone with your prospect destiny, I've answered all your, your, your prospects questions and I say, okay, are you ready to get started? And they say, well, no, not right now. I mean, I like what I saw, but not right now. Um, then I'm going to say, when will you be ready with your $200 to get started? I'm going to get her to give me a commitment date. And she might say, well, probably like mid-February. Guess what? I'm going to pull out my calendar, look for the Friday, because most people get paid on a Friday. And I'm going to say, oh, okay, Friday, let's say it's the 15th is a Friday. I'm going to say, is Friday the 15th a good day? You think you'll be ready then? Yeah, that works. And then I'm going to say, Destiny, does Friday the 15th work for you? Yeah, okay. What time? I'm going to make her give me a date and time before we get off that phone. Because we're not going to have these people in limbo and, and now you feel like you're chasing them. You should, we're doing business. We don't chase people. We schedule appointments. That's what professionals do. Does that make sense? Well, no. So that's what I mean. After we, because we did that on the three-way call, we had a time uh, confirmed and scheduled for her. And so then when I followed up with her on that date, she then said she still wanted to think about it. So this is okay, after- Okay, you're going to get another date. Get another date? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you just get another date. Bam, bam, book a meeting from a meeting. Until they give you a hard no, I'm not interested, you keep scheduling the follow-up. You might have to push it out till next month. Say, okay, how about I follow up with you, you know, next month to see where you are with it. And invite them to another exposure. Because it might have been you expose them to a video, a 10-minute video, but maybe they need that 30-minute webinar. So get them on that 30-minute webinar. Or if they were exposed to the webinar, maybe they need that 60-minute hotel meeting. So now you're going to take it to another. There's levels. Y'all see that? 10 minute video, right? That don't close them. I'm gonna get them on a 30 minute webinar. That don't close them. I'm gonna get them to a 60 minute hotel meeting. You see what I'm saying, Destiny? There's levels to the exposure. They, they need more information. Remember I said before, two out of every 100 will sign right away. Five out of 100 will never ever join no matter what. So 93 out of every 100 people you speak to about the business need either more information or more time. So give them the more information, give them the more time. You just got to keep moving that meeting until they're ready. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Now, if they're in another state, how do you, what's the next level of exposure then if you can't join them at that hotel meeting with them? You don't need to join them at the hotel meeting. That's that okay. when you invite someone like, let's say like, I'm not in Georgia, right? I'm in Florida, but I know Ruth is going to the Georgia meeting. I know my sponsor, Mr. Scott is at the Georgia meeting. I know that director Orlando Moore is at the whole, is at the Georgia meeting. I'm going to call either Mr. Scott or Mr. Moore and say, listen, I have a guest that's coming tonight. Her name is da, 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 right? And I may even introduce them on the phone. And I'm going to tell my prospect, I want you to look for Mr. Moore or Mr. Scott. Make sure you introduce yourself to them. They're going to be looking for you. So I'm not just going to send my prospect to the meeting without them having someone to connect with there and having that person expecting them. I don't need to be there. I'm not driving nine hours, seven hours to Georgia to hit the, no, but I'm going to send people there, but I'm going to make sure they have someone to connect with when they get there. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And you, and anytime you send someone to a meeting in another state, make sure you schedule a follow-up call with them for the very next day, because that's going to be the sign-up date. 
They're going to like what they see. And if it's not, the, if they don't sign up that day, guess what you're going to do? Schedule an appointment. Okay, when will you be ready with your $200 to get started? All right. Yes, divorce and Ruth, y'all need to connect. Y'all right there in Atlanta together. And this is another reason why it's so important you show up to the events, right? All of y'all should have been in Vegas. And guess what? You would have met other business partners that live in other areas, other markets that you can connect with. And now you have somebody to send your guests to, to meet. That's another reason to show up. All right, I'm in Florida. If you got guests coming to the Orlando meeting or Tampa meeting, reach out to me. Director Burke, I got somebody coming to the Tampa meeting. Guess what? I'm gonna write their name down. You tell them to make sure they come to me. And I'm gonna close them for you. They're gonna be ready to sign up because I'm gonna make sure they get all their questions answered. I'm gonna be like, okay, what day are you getting ready? Are you gonna be ready? Any questions, comments, feedback? That's all I got for y'all tonight. Director Kennedy, I have a quick question about um, the building wealth with travel business opportunities Sunday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Is that just for 40 days or is that like every Sunday through Friday at eight o'clock? Uh, as yeah. far as I know, that's something that Director Raley had put together. And it was Sunday through Friday. But if you check the group, I listed the corporate events. Everybody got the notification about Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, corporate, Facebook page, and Friday, Freedom Friday. Leverage those. Prime, I would make those primary. You know why? First of all, Mr. Moore is very consistent. You ain't got to worry about Freedom Friday going away. And Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Mr. Bradley has that as corporate. It's never going to go away. That is what it is. You can count on that. You can bank on those. Anytime a director does something, it's not, it's not going to be forever. They may be consistent this month and then next month, you know, then they don't have it. You don't know. So I always want you to leverage your corporate stuff. And yeah, if you see a director thing, you know, you can get some people on, but I don't want you to get so comfortable on these ones that the directors do because sometimes they have them and then sometimes they don't. And now you inviting somebody to something and nobody showed up, but I can guarantee you the Monday, Tuesday and Thursday corporate Facebook page is going to be there without a doubt. And I can guarantee you Freedom Friday, Mr. Morris is going to be there without a doubt. But some of the other ones that the directors are doing, you know, we like, for example, if all the directors are at a director summit, who's gonna do the corporate, you know, who's gonna do the webinar? You don't, just anything could happen. Anything could happen. So I want you to leverage the systems that corporate has already put in place. Cause you can't, you can't lose with those. But the, I mean, there's been some, I've had flyers that, you know, Damian Goins was doing and I'm like, hey, is this still going on? Because I never leveraged it for a while, but I had the flyer for a long time. He's like, no, we're not doing that one anymore. I've gotten burnt like that several, anybody ever get burnt sending someone to a webinar and it didn't happen and you didn't know that they can't? A few times. So to avoid that, we want to, you want to make your business system dependent and not people dependent. System dependent and not people dependent. The Monday, Tuesday, Thursday corporate will always be there, period. And that Freedom Friday, Mr. Moore is always going to do Freedom Friday. And at least if he ever decided he wasn't going to do it anymore, he's going to let you know. I guarantee that. But some of these other ones at the, even my own, I was doing them three days a week and then I stopped. Right? Things change with us. 
So keep it system dependent. And the, and the other benefit of leveraging the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday corporate is that it's on Facebook. So now you can just send the link to the Facebook page and it's on the Facebook page. So even if they miss it, let's say they get the time zones all mixed up. Well, guess what? All of the previous ones are right there on the Facebook page. They can watch any one of them that they want is there. So that's even better because now it's not dependent on 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If they don't get on it until nine, guess what? The 7 p.m. is still there. And now you can even tag them in it. Even better. Questions, comments, feedback? Chanel, can you talk about that? Are you still on? Where's Chanel? You said the meeting gave you a new perspective and helped you form a game plan. Can you speak about that? Yes, I've had several meetings and several conversations with the director, with my sponsor. And every time I think I get it, there's still something holding me back from doing it. But with scripts, um, and this talk about picking interest and having a goal on how much numbers to do, I'm here for my life this plan. And I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I can do it. Yeah. It makes absolutely. it doable. Absolutely. Absolutely. So has this training helped anyone? What's your biggest takeaway? Give me your biggest takeaway from tonight's training that is going to be the most impactful for you. Anybody? PS and three. What about the PS3? Do it. <laughs> exactly. Anybody else? <laughs> the calendar. Just having that visualization every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? The goal for me, uh, being able to memorize it really helped me um, just visualize how to get my goal done through the week. Because mm -hmm. I kept thinking like, I, I think I was rushing out, trying to do like 20 people in one day and then nothing for the whole week. And that's kind of gave me a goal a uh, ballpark of like how to how to prepare myself for it and how to um, cat categorize it and put it in my calendar so that I'll have something to do during the week instead of just being confused, lost, over overran by work. So mm -hmm. good, good. April said scripting option number two, finding the need. That's good, April. Luce, my, oh. Luce and then uh, Corey. I think that was you. So um, the script really will help. Um, I use them here and there, and I actually feel more comfortable using that type of script than others that we've been giving. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing was the breaking down of it, because I've heard you speak about like 70, 35, and um, the 18, and maybe I just never caught it before, where you said this is for a 20 to 25, you know, a person who could dedicate 20 to 25 hours to business in a week um because you know I've tried and I'm like you no know, I, I was I was getting in my own way mm -hmm. but definitely just the mask and the, the time so definitely was helpful that's good and destiny said choosing the right script for the right person is her takeaway yes yeah, so it got to be the right thing and personalize it customize it don't make it sound like a script don't use words that you wouldn't use <laughs> in your normal vocabulary it's just to give you the concept of what the conversation should look like. Uh, Corey? Um, for me, I've, I've seen your, your Jaffe video, so I'm familiar with the, the scripts. Um, and so I have used the scripts before, but um, I, my takeaway is I've wanted to do the, um, you said don't use travel parties, so the private business receptions. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to... Uh, get into those because I did go to um, the the um, core <clears throat> when they were here in Chicago and that is one of the things that I took away from when um, and I always get her name twisted uh, Natalie Nicole Natalie Nicole, Natalie Graham. Nicole uh -huh. yeah Graham when she spoke and that's what she said that that's how she really got her business kind of off the ground 
was by having those those um, PBRs. Yep. So um, that's one of the things that I would like to mimic. So good, good, good. That's good. Norma? Thank you, Director Burke. I think what, what I'm, I'm, my takeaway today is the, the list to have them already ready so that we're not searching for who to go to. Yep. But I always try to do the 70 weekly, but I just never have them. And that's really have me all over the place. Sometimes I feel unaccomplished. Right, so that's right. one thing I will be doing. Excellent, excellent. Natisha? I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, having that list, because a lot of times I leave home without it and I'm just scrambling to figure out who I'm going to reach out to. Mm -hmm. So um, it throws me off. Um, but now I'm redoing my uh, planner last week. I was able to lock a lot of things in um, and it helped me to get more focus. But I do want to share too with the scripts um, because I've been, you know, Sanisha for a long time. Um, honestly, I was one of those people uh, that never really knew what to say. Um, and the scripts have actually helped me so much. Now, like I just have them memorized on my brain. Um, although I use my own words, but I know, you know, what to go to. So it's there. Um, you don't have to use it, you know, word for word. Right. Um, but once you use them consistently, you do remember them and know how to uh, tweak them around. So yeah, I love yeah. scripts. And I got one more thing that uh, I want y'all to write down. And this is, and then we're going to end this for tonight. Um, and I meant to say it when I was going over the, the three different peaks is what do you say when people ask you, what do you do? You do never, ever, ever identify yourself as a travel agent. That's number one. Never identify yourself as a travel agent because that keeps you in a box. And now all they think they can do is book travel with you. And if they're broke and live and check the check, you, ne you will never hear from them because they can't afford to book a trip with you. You are also a planet marketing rep, right? So why would you just identify yourself as a travel agent? So here's, here's what I say. You can tweak this. You may come up with something different. I'm only sharing with you how I respond when people ask me what I do. Here's what I say. I am a travel business owner. I am a travel business owner. And I help position people. I help position people who want to earn extra income. I am a travel business owner. I help position people who want to earn extra income on the money-making side of the travel industry. On the money-making side of the travel industry. I am a travel business owner and I help position people who want to earn extra income on the money-making side of the travel industry. My husband identifies himself as a travel executive. I think Michelle Proctor also uses travel executive. Whatever is going to work for you. But don't say you are a travel agent because you're more than that. You make money on both sides of the business. So don't put yourself in that box. Or else the people who can't afford to book travel, which could potentially be the people who should be your business partners, you will never get them because they think that all you do is book travel. So never, ever, ever identify yourself as a travel agent. You are a travel business owner and you help position people who want to earn extra income on the money-making side of the travel industry. So you can position them on the planet marketing side and you're going to position them on the IntelliTravel side. They got to make money on both sides. Does that make sense? Yes, and, and travel agent keeps you in the employee mindset. Exactly, because if you don't book travel, you don't make money. Any questions before I let y'all go? 
Was tonight a valuable training for you? Always. Everybody got some good nuggets to help them and for you to help your team. Remember, pay it forward. You have to take the knowledge and share the information with your team. You may have business partners that are not in this boot camp for whatever reason, but you're getting the knowledge of what their day-to-day -day work should look like. So you, this is how you're going to help your people. All right. So uh, I'll see y'all on Sunday. Have a great week. Everybody come up with your plan. What are your numbers for peaks, exposures, and three ways? And put it on your calendar. So now you need to schedule those. When am I going to get these peaks in so that by the end of the week, I've hit my weekly goal? And next week, I want to know who hit their weekly goal and what is your weekly goal? Matter of fact, I might even post in the group, what is your weekly goal? And I want to see peaks, exposures, three ways based on the amount of hours you can commit to your business. Okay? And push yourself. Don't do the bare minimum. Push yourself. Okay? All right. See y'all next week. Mm -hmm. Love y'all. Good night, Tanisha. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone.